Just because the dinosaurs vanished 66 million years ago doesn't mean the world became any safer afterward. In fact, it might have been even more terrifying. New apex predators took over massive, powerful hunters that ruled the land with little to no competition. Take Andrewsarchus, for example. Picture a wolf, but supersized, like genuinely enormous. This creature had a skull over three feet long and jaws built for crushing bone. It was one of the largest terrestrial predators of its time, and trust me, it wasn't hunting alone in the grand scheme of Cenozoic predators. The Cenozoic era was packed with some of the most fearsome carnivores to ever walk the earth, and they ensured that nothing was truly safe. If you think today's crocodiles are scary, wait until you hear about Barina Sucus. This wasn't some lazy river dweller waiting for prey to get too close. It was a land-hunting monster that dominated South America from approximately 42 to 11.8 million years ago. And when I say monster, I mean it. This creature stretched up to 9.8 meters, 32 feet long. That's Allosaurus-sized, and it had legs built for running, not primarily for swimming. It was the largest terrestrial predator of its time in its ecosystem, and believe me, you would not have wanted to cross its path. Barina Suchus gets its name from Barinas, Venezuela, where one of its fossils was discovered. While we don't have a ton of fossil evidence, just three partial skulls, what we do know is enough to paint a terrifying picture, particularly concerning its teeth. They were serrated, curved, and perfect for slicing through flesh, much like the ones you'd see on a theropod dinosaur. Unlike modern crocodiles, which often waddle with legs splayed out to the sides, Barina Sucus was built more like a big cat or a bear, with its legs positioned directly beneath its body for efficient terrestrial locomotion. Even its tail was different, likely shorter and stiffer than aquatic crocodilians, perfect for balance while running. Its skull alone was nearly a meter long, about three feet packed with muscle attachments that gave it one of the most powerful bites of any land predator in its era. And let's not forget about those ziphodont, laterally compressed and serrated teeth. So what did Barinasuchus eat pretty much whatever it wanted? Large mammals, reptiles, maybe even giant prehistoric birds. For millions of years, this apex predator had almost no competition until shifting environments finally brought its reign to an end around 12 million years ago. Fossils suggest it thrived in land-based ecosystems, unlike the semi-aquatic crocodilians we primarily see today. Still imagine if it had survived. A 10-meter-long land-dwelling crocodilian built for speed. That's nightmare fuel right there! Some prehistoric animals leave behind a treasure trove of well-preserved fossils. Andrusarchus, on the other hand, left us with one gigantic skull and a multitude of unanswered questions. Despite that, this ancient predator has gained a reputation as one of the largest land-dwelling carnivorous mammals to have ever lived. Andrusarchus lived during the Eocene epoch, around 45 to 36 million years ago, roaming what is now China and Mongolia. Its name honors the paleontologist Roy Chapman Andrews, who led the expedition that discovered its remains in the 1920s. The only known fossil, a jaw-dropping 83-centimeter, nearly three-foot-long skull, suggests it was a massive, powerful predator. But what did the rest of it look like? That's where things get tricky. Since no full skeleton has been found, scientists have to compare Andrewsarchus to its closest known relatives. It belongs to the Mesonychia, an extinct order of hoofed mammals that were perhaps surprisingly related to early whales and even toed ungulates like hippos. Based on its skull size and comparisons to other Mesonychids, some estimates put Andrusarchus at 3.6 to 4.5 meters, 12 to 15 feet long, and weighing up to 900 kilograms, 2,000 pounds, about the size of a modern-day bison, but built like a carnivorous tank. Its long, robust jaws were filled with strong teeth, some adapted for slicing flesh, others for crushing bone. This dental arrangement suggests Andrusarchus wasn't just a predator, but possibly a scavenger as well. Since it lived in coastal environments near ancient seas, its diet was likely diverse. It may have hunted primitive mammals and reptiles, and even feasted on giant turtles or beached sea creatures. If it was an opportunistic feeder, 
It could have stolen kills from other predators, crushed shellfish, or scavenged whenever necessary. If there was ever an animal that looked like it came straight out of a horror movie, it was the Entelodont, better known by the menacing nickname, Hell Pig. Despite this moniker, these terrifying creatures weren't actually pigs. They belonged to a separate extinct family called Entelodontidae, more closely related to hippos and whales than to modern swine. But don't let that taxonomic detail fool you. Entelodonts were brutal, bone-crushing carnivores that ruled landscapes in North America and Eurasia for millions of years. Entelodonts lived from the Eocene to the Miocene epoch approximately 38 to 19 million years ago. The largest species Deodon could grow up to, 3.6 meters 12 feet long, stand 1.8 meters 6 feet tall at the shoulders, and weigh over 900 kilograms, 2,000 pounds. Its skull alone was over 1 meter 3 feet long, featuring huge jaw muscles and thick bone structures that helped absorb impacts. One of its most recognizable features was the bony protrusions or cheek flanges on its face, which may have been used for display intimidation or even defense during brutal intraspecific fights. While intelodonts weren't pure carnivores, they definitely had a significant taste for meat. Their large, crushing teeth suggest they could bite through bone, meaning they were likely formidable scavengers that could crack open carcasses for marrow. But that doesn't mean they were averse to hunting. With their massive size, powerful jaws, and long legs, built for running intelodonts, could have certainly chased down smaller mammals, dispatching them with a bone-shattering bite. Their stomach contents and toothware show they also ate roots fruits and other plant materials, meaning they were technically omnivores. However, based on their apparent aggression and size, they probably acted much like modern-day hyenas, willing to eat almost anything. Whether it was hunted, scavenged, or stolen from other predators, their intelligence is another question. Some scientists believe they may have been smarter than modern pigs, which are already considered highly intelligent animals. If that's the case, intelodonts weren't just strong and aggressive. They may have been clever and strategic hunters as well. Bears also used to be very big. Meet Arctotherium, also known as the Bear Beast. Trust me, that name is well earned. It was a giant short-faced predator that ruled Central and South America during the Pleistocene from 2. 58 million! to 11,700 years ago. It made its way down from North America during the Great American Interchange, when the Isthmus of Panama finally connected the continents. Once it arrived, there was virtually no stopping it. Now, not all Arctotherium species were towering giants, but one of them, Arctotherium angustidens, was an absolute unit. This was the largest bear species ever discovered, standing up to 4 meters 13 feet tall when rearing up on its hind legs and weighing a staggering 1,600 kilograms. That's three 500 pounds heavier than a modern-day polar bear by a long shot. Even though Arctotherium was more closely related to the spectacled bear than to the famous North American short-faced bear Arctotus, both evolved their massive sizes independently. Because apparently during that time, being a giant was an advantageous evolutionary path for bears. Arctotherium was first described in 1879 by Hermann Burmeister, and it belongs to a group of bears called Tremarctini, also known as short-faced bears. But don't let the short-faced name fool you. Its snout wasn't exactly short in the way you might conventionally think. It was just deeper and more robust compared to those of modern bears, contributing to a unique facial structure. If you really want to tell different species of Arctotherium apart, the key is in the teeth. While the upper canines were pretty similar across species, the lower canines varied with some species, sporting two enamel ridges, while others had three. It's a small detail, but an important one for paleontologists. Arctotherium wasn't picky about where it lived. It thrived in open landscapes and mixed environments, showcasing just how adaptable it was. Get this, some scientists believe it might have been semi-arboreal at times. Yes, a bear, this big potentially climbing trees, or using its strong forelimbs for digging. 
That kind of flexibility would have given it an edge, especially as an omnivore and scavenger, allowing it to exploit a wide range of food sources. But don't think for a second that Arctotherium was just waiting around for leftovers. Sure, it was likely omnivorous, but it had a serious inclination for meat. It probably scavenged carcasses of giant sloths, glyptodonts, and early horses. Fossil evidence also suggests it was an active hunter. Some teeth show signs of heavy wear and fractures hinting at a diet that included large prey and the consumption of tough bones. The fossils tell another story, two old injuries, possibly from territorial fights or battles over food. Life as an apex predator wasn't easy even for a giant like Arctotherium. You know how Mufasa was the king of the Pride Lands and the Lion King? Well, imagine if he was twice the size, lived in Ice Age North America, and instead of ruling over zebras and warthogs, he was taking down bison mammoths and prehistoric camels. That's the American lion Panthera atrox, a predator that made today's biggest big cats look like house kittens by comparison. This beast wasn't just any lion, it was one of the largest felines to ever walk the earth. If you think Scar was intimidating picture a lion 25% bigger than modern ones, with massive bear-like limbs and a bone-crushing bite. It roamed across what is now Canada, the US, and Mexico during the late Pleistocene ruling as an apex predator for thousands of years. But unlike the fictional Pride Lands, this world wasn't all sunshine and catchy songs. Panthera atrox lived during an era of giant sloths, saber-toothed cats, and Ice Age elephants, and it had to fight constantly for survival. Scientists believe it split from the Eurasian cave lion lineage about 165,000 to 340,000 years ago, subsequently adapting to North America and growing into an absolute unit of a predator. Now we don't know for sure if the American lion had a pride-like social structure similar to modern lions. Some experts think it might have been social, but others argue it was more of a lone hunter, like a massive prehistoric version of a solitary big cat, silent, powerful, and deadly. The first fossil of this legendary predator was actually discovered in the 1830s, but scientists didn't realize how special it was until much later. Over time, more fossils turned up in places like Alaska, Canada, and California's La Brea tar pits, where countless animals got trapped in sticky asphalt and were preserved for thousands of years. Now let's talk size, because this cat wasn't just big. It was record-breaking for a lion. The American lion measured between 1.6 and 2.5 meters, that's 5.3 to 8.2 feet from nose to tail base, and stood about 1.2 meters, 3.9 feet at the shoulder. Males were huge, weighing anywhere from 235 to 523 kilograms, 518 to 153 pounds, while females were a bit smaller, but still massive. To put that into perspective, some Panthera atrox males were up to twice the size of today's average African lions. If Simba met one, he'd probably take one look and say, nope. Hunting-wise, this lion wasn't chasing after the antelopes or meerkats of the Lion King. Instead, it went for bison deer camels, tapirs, and even young mammoths. Fossil evidence suggests it had a particular fondness for pronghorns, though it probably also stole kills from other Ice Age predators like the American cheetah Myrosinonyx. But here's an interesting fact. Unlike some modern big cats and hyenas, the American lion apparently avoided eating bone extensively. Speaking of deadly skills, Panthera atrox had an estimated bite force of 2,830 newtons, which means if it chomped down, that was effectively game over for whatever poor animal it had in its jaws. But even kings don't rule forever. Around 12 to 800 years ago, this Ice Age apex predator went extinct. As many large prey species vanished and the climate changed, the mighty American lion lost its place at the top of the food chain. Smilodon, the famous saber-toothed predator that's often called the saber-toothed tiger. But trust me, it's not related to modern tigers at all. Smilodon was part of the now extinct Machairodontini subfamily, which split from the ancestors of modern cats around 20 million years ago. It roamed the Americas during the Pleistocene epoch from 2.5 million to about 10,000 years ago. While its name meaning scalpel tooth or knife tooth 
might sound all fancy, it's renowned for its crazy long, sharp upper canine teeth. Smilodon came in three main species. Smilodon gracilis, the smallest. Smilodon fatalis, the mid-sized one. And Smilodon populator, the big bad brute of the group reaching up to 436 kilograms, 961 pounds. Imagine that its massive forelimbs coupled with those enormous canines made it a formidable hunter. The La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles have yielded the best Smilodon fossil collection, giving us a remarkable glimpse into its life. Its canines, though impressively long, were somewhat fragile laterally, and thus were likely used for a quick, clean killing bite to the throat of subdued prey. As for its diet, Smilodon in North America likely hunted bison and camels, while in South America, it probably went for large game like ground sloths and macrochania. It was a stealthy ambush predator, probably lurking in forests or dense vegetation, ready to pounce on anything big enough to take down. The big debate was Smilodon a lone hunter, or did it hunt in packs? We're not totally sure, but evidence of healed injuries in some fossils suggests some level of social care, though it likely preferred dense environments where it could get close to its prey for an ambush. Unfortunately, around 13,000 to 10,000 years ago, Smilodon went extinct, possibly due to a combination of climate changes, habitat loss, and the disappearance of its megafaunal prey, perhaps exacerbated by human hunting pressures. Kalenkin was one serious terror bird, literally. This giant flightless predator lived in what's now Argentina around 15 million years ago. A high school student, Guillermo Aguirre Zabala, discovered its fossils in Patagonia, leading to its official naming in 2007. The find included an exceptionally well-preserved skull, a lower leg bone tarsometa tarsus, and a toe bone, giving scientists a much better look at the anatomy of large forest racids. Kalenkin is classified in the Forest Racienae subfamily closely related to Devincenzia, and its closest living relatives are the Seriemus. At 3 meters 9.8 feet tall and weighing over 100 kilograms 20 pounds, Kalenkin was the largest known forest racid or terror bird with a skull measuring 71. 6 centimeters, 2.3 feet, the biggest bird skull ever found comparable in size to a horse's head. Its long legs suggest it was faster than previously thought for such large birds likely capable of chasing down smaller prey. Studies on related forest racids indicate that it had a rigid skull built for striking downwards with its massive beak and possibly swallowing prey whole or in large chunks. Kellenkin was found in the Colon Cura formation dating to the Middle Miocene. This fossil-rich site has revealed many prehistoric animals from mammals to reptiles and fish. Terror birds, Forest Racidae, dominated South America's ecosystems as apex predators for millions of years, thriving in the relative absence of large placental mammalian carnivores. Some even migrated to North America during the Great American Biotic Interchange. Kalenkin lived during a period when South America was shifting to drier, more open environments, favoring fast-running hunters. This change coincided with the Middle Miocene climatic transition, a cooling event that significantly reshaped global ecosystems. Like this video. Share it with those who still seek beyond the surface. And subscribe to Air Awake, where forgotten truths awaken and lost wisdom speaks again.